hi so welcome everyone so this video is meant for those who want to know more on the steady state analysis and how to capture its response for example you are going to simulate some vibrating machines uh, which is mounted on a table structure or any kind of supporting structure now this kind of machine uh, operates with the cyclic motion for example the supporting structure on which the rotating machine is sitting it is imparting some constant harmonic motion uh, it can be anything like motor or it can be pump or any kind of uh, equipment which is having some constant cyclic motion inside now such kind of machine typically imparts the harmonic motion on this um, base structure that is on this supporting structure so the interest of the engineer or the structural engineer is mostly to understand the dynamic response and uh, the most important part or the critical part is to capture the event or the stage where there could be some possible likelihood of the resonance and this is totally undesirable and we want to avoid this kind of resonance like event now this resonance like event happens only when there is a coincidence or uh, when the natural frequency is getting very close to the operating input frequency of the machine so for this we need to check for the entire range of the input uh, frequency at which the machine is operating for example the machine is operating from its uh, resting condition that is at the zero frequency and it goes all the way to a certain magnitude say for example 50 or 100 hertz so we need to check that okay up to this entire range what is the most critical part where I could have some resonance like event so in general uh, for the single operating frequency we can do it in time stay analysis um, for example just we want to capture the dynamic response of uh, say uh, 30 Hertz then we can define it very easily in the time stay analysis but if you want to check for the entire range it is not possible in the time stay analysis and for that we have some dedicated module or the feature instead that is only meant to handle this kind of problems and this module is known as the steady state uh, solver uh, here the program will only capture the steady state part of the problem uh, you know that there are two different parts in the harmonic motion uh, one is the transient part and one is the steady state part the transient part eventually decays it is there in this response at the very beginning but it decays and only your steady state response would continue so here the program will only capture the steady state part making the problem solution much more simpler and faster so in the steady state analysis in addition to the single input of the operating frequency as I mentioned we can define the entire range of this variable input frequency so that's the biggest advantage we have here so let's see how we can define the variable input uh, operating frequency of the machine in the steady state module instead now this is a very simple model uh, this is a simple portal frame and uh, here you can see uh, I have defined some loading information so here you could see that we have different definitions and the load case is already defined but please note that the steady state input instead has to be only defined through the input editor we can't define it from the graphics only few important things like uh, model calculation request and all we could have done it in the graphics but I generally prefer to do it all from the input editor because most of the stuffs are to be defined from the input editor so let's uh, I have already opened the input editor so let's bring it here okay now this is a general stat input file of this portal frame so first create the portal frame and all now I'll just take you to the most uh, important part that is the steady state analysis part 
now here uh, you have to define all those syntax in the input editor first is the load case detail that the load case one uh, because we have only taken the single load case here uh, the load case one is nothing but here we have to define the mass modeling just like in any model analysis we have to define the mass uh, that is the inertial information which is supposed to vibrate in the say degrees of freedom so here we have just for this example we have taken a single load case where we have defined the joint load and this is the a node at which we have defined the joint load and it is along the global x-axis so here the uh, degrees of freedom is along the global x-axis and this is the mass uh, in the uh, current unit system now here i have taken only the joint load you could have taken the cell fate because obviously cell fate is a very important inertial mass of the structure so this is nothing but this is just a uh, mass modeling definition now then you have to go for this model calculation request so that you can get the uh, eigenvalue uh, solution like eigenvector and its corresponding natural frequencies and eventually you have to go for the most important part that is the steady state instruction so it all starts uh, with this uh, uh, syntax that is the perform steady state analysis and then you have to define just you uh, note this uh, syntax because this is the standard syntax and you can also follow the same by just uh, fiddling the values so this is the begin harmonic forces you can do the steady state analysis both for the harmonic as well as the non-harmonic nor non-harmonic like ground motions for the earthquake but here we are discussing on the harmonic force so here this is uh, for a variable input frequency so we have taken this one that is the frequency with the syntax called flo and fhi flo is the lowest and fhi is the highest so this is where we have defined the entire range right from the minimum to the maximum one so the minimum is 0 hertz and maximum we have taken it as a 55 hertz so within that range we will just uh, check through stat that okay which is the most critical one and stat will like, report accordingly report us um, the most uh, critical uh, you know event where we could uh, expect the resonance like situation and in addition to that we can also define certain interval for example even though we are not interested at the resonance event but additionally we are also interested in just uh, seeing the dynamic response at certain input frequency then we can define those values here for example 10 hertz 20 hertz 30 or 40 so basically if you define this information program would report you um, the information like the a resonance like event at which frequency resonance would occur and in addition to that at those defined interval program would also report you the dynamic response like uh, acceleration or the displacement or the velocity so here you have to define this damping this very important thing yeah damping you can define here and then we have this joint load now please note that here also we have defined joint load here also we have defined joint load so here most of our stat user get a bit confused like why there are two different uh, uh, you know ways to define the joint loads actually it's not two different ways uh, there are two different location where we have to define the joint load first one is for the mass modeling now this one that is this one the second one is not for the mass modeling it's for the force that is imparted by uh, the machine uh, this force is uh, essentially the amplitude of the force now here you can see at the joint 2 that is where the machine is being placed and uh, the direction is fx that is along the global x direction and you can define the exact amplitude value but this information is merely to define the direction of this applied force and its uh, certain factor now this uh, joint load is merely to define the joint number and the direction of the applied load because here after this we also have some additional information where we can define the values of the amplitude 
at certain input frequency interval so we can keep it as one because anyway this amplitude value that we have defined under joint load is going to be scaled up by the amplitude value that we have defined later on so what we can do we can uh, just uh, keep it as the actual amplitude values and we can scale it up or scale it down later on by this amplitude x you can see it at every interval or you can keep it as a one and then you can amplify it later on okay so anyway you can do any of the approach but uh, i generally prefer keeping it to one if you are only interested in those uh, interval so for example i have just increased the actual one as by 10 and reduced it by this So I think we are good here. So the summary is here that this value would be multiplied with this. So accordingly, you can just manipulate. Now we can fire the analysis run. Now, please note that there is no such specific analysis command for the steady state analysis. So, okay. Now eventually we are going to fire the analysis run. Now to perform the steady state analysis, uh, you needn't have to go to the graphical user interface to fire the analysis run. Here we have already started this analysis uh, instruction by this syntax perform steady state analysis. So basically program understand that you are going to perform the steady state analysis for this. So after you have defined all those syntax associated with the steady state analysis, you can just conclude this by defining the uh, command like end and then finish. So just run the analysis. Okay, now we could see the result both in the output file as well as in the post processing now if i go to the output file first of all you can get the entire eigen solution the mass participation factors and so all just like uh, what you do in the model analysis and additionally you can get the harmonic response now this is uh, the exciting frequency uh, frequency one So you can see here that we got different exciting frequencies starting from um, the value like this 1 hertz then 2.03 we will just see what are those values and then the range that we have or the interval that we have defined 10 hertz 20 hertz 30 40 and then the maximum one is the 55 and then it's finished so let's explore what exactly the first two initial exciting frequency interprets so we will go to the post processing file and you can see this steady state response uh, but before going to the steady state uh, this table you can see the mode shapes and all just like the normal procedure you can get the different mode shape here we have taken a single degrees of freedom so we have only single mode shapes then you can go to the displacement response for example here take uh, any of the node here okay now here you can see uh, this is the first one initial value it has taken as a uh, uh, you know one hertz because it has to start uh, with some initial values and this uh, second exciting frequency you must have seen in the output file that is a 2.036 this is the one okay so this is where you can understand that okay my resonance will occur at this point that correspond to uh, this 2.036 hertz 
and 0 0.305 is the actual response in this unit system that is in inch. So you can see that uh, up to the entire stretch, we can uh, capture the steady state response. Okay, so you can see that within the entire stretch, this is the peak response. So we have to be very cautious that at this input frequency, my machine can, or my entire structure or assembly can vibrate very vigorously relative to all the other input frequencies. So that is how uh, we can uh, capture the steady state response and understand that what is at what point I could have some dynamic amplification or the resonance-like event. So that's all. Uh, similar procedure, you can capture the dis uh, acceleration as well as the velocity response. So should you have any doubts or need more clarification, please don't hesitate to post your remarks in the comments. See you again. Bye.